Okay, so welcome to this section, guys. So <laughs> we'll be spawning lots and lots of bad guys um, in this case. So what we want is basically every one minute, a new bad guy should spawn um, somewhere around the screen. So I'll do this in the easiest way possible. Um, I do not want anything complex, but uh, you guys can modify this code to your own liking. In fact, I highly encourage that. So we'll go to our game scene. And then in this section, what we'll have to do is first of all, create a schedule. So schedules can be used if you want to do something repetitively. Okay. So this dot schedule. Okay. Then inside here, we can say this dot create bad, which will be a function that will create. So this function is going to be creating bad guys, basically. Okay, how, how often do we want it run? We'll be creating it every one second. Okay, to be the function will be running every one second. How often do we want it? Um, um, how long should this be going on for? We'll just say to be going on forever. So cc dot macro dot repeat forever. So as long as the game is running, this will always be happening. Then when starting, do we want to delay it by any amount? Um, we can delay it by maybe two or three seconds when starting. So the player will have three seconds before the the, the, the create bad function starts running. When it starts running, the bad guys start popping up every one second, and this will be repeated forever. So this is the schedule we've created. So now, what we then need to do is create the function, create bad, create bad. So this is going to be created in as simple as a uh, possible so just like we created a prefab for bullets when we're making clones of something we need to create prefabs for them so in this case this bad guy will be dragged down in here so that we have a clone of it this prefab okay so then in our code we'll create a property cc dot prefab then this will be we'll say bad guy cc prefab okay so bad guy cc prefab equals now okay so what this will do like mentioned earlier is it's going to create an empty field for the bad guy that we've just created so in this case, we'll drag the bad guy inside the prefab. So what that will do is then make sure that bad guy is equal to this bad guy here. Once we do that, we can then make clones of the bad guy. So in this case, we can then create multiple clones of bad guy just as we are creating multiple clones of the bullet. So the code is actually going to be very, very similar uh, with just a few exceptions. So we'll say uh, new bad, new bad guy. Uh, so every time this new uh, bad guy is created, right? So Cocos should instantiate this dot bad guy. So this dot bad guy referring to property we've just created okay so once we do that we'll have to of course um, set the bad guy's position so this is the part that I will try to simplify as much as possible um, so we'll just have a number of various positions stored up uh, maybe in an object okay or maybe yeah we just use an array okay so we'll create lots and lots of positions uh maybe six or so 
positions or yeah something like that so the way i'll do this i'll just do it very very manually um there's better ways of doing this i'll admit but um yeah i'll i'll, I'll use the simple approach we can come back to this section in the future if you guys want um, us to, to do something more random so what i'll do is keep a number of ideal positions so for example i want i want the aliens to be spawning around this area okay then immediately they spawn of course they'll be moving towards the player so what i'll do is just get a number of random positions so here this is negative 744 by 458 negative 744 by 458 so that will be my first position so cc.v2 and then inside there negative 778 by 458 okay the next one cc.v2 okay um, where can this one be coming from so this one let's put it at the opposite end so this will be 743 by negative 457 okay it actually looks like the, the opposite end eh? negative 458 okay then we'll create another one cc to v2 Then let's pick a position, maybe something a little bit more central, like there. Okay. Then this is 779 by 6. 779 by 6. Okay, then cc.v2. Okay, another position. So try negative 800 okay negative 7 by 18 okay yeah then maybe i will just make a copy of of these and then flip them I'll flip them around so let's say positive that by positive that okay negative that by negative seven okay then this can be maybe 200 okay i'll copy this one as well then make it negative 200 okay then yeah i think ah, for now that's going to be all i'll use but yeah this is a very very manual way of doing it course if we want we can randomly generate um, a position based on the canvas width so we can say um, based on the canvas width and uh, and height we can randomly we can randomly do that but again like I said let's let's keep this as simple as possible this is almost um, one in the morning uh, as as of the time I'm recording this this tutorial so yeah I'm trying to get through as fast as possible right now so for our player position uh, no not player position in this case this is going to be bad guy position so bad guy position is equal to we create a function in fact, we just use this already existing function. Math.flow is used to get uh, 
basically to get rid of decimals or floats. So if you have 1.1, you just have 1. If you've got 5.3, you just have 5. If you've got 10.8, you just have 10. So that's, that's the job of math.flow. So the reason we need math.flow is because we need to get a random number. So for that, we will still use math.random, which gets a random number. We give it um, what it's going to randomize from. So we want it to randomize based on the length of this array. So the positions and yeah, positions dot length. Positions dot length. So in this case, what we're doing is like saying we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine items. So it's math.random times position positions dot length um, is basically just making sure that we randomize between one and nine. So one to nine, one to nine. It's always going to be randomizing from one to nine. If we've got a, a, a number that is not a that is not uh, fixed, uh, that's not a complete integer. So if we've got a float, if we've got a decimal, um, it's going to be making sure that it um, it, it rounds down to, to the actual number. So to give you a clue as to what's going to be going on, so just uh, we'll just run that and then uh, check with our simulator in this section to see where it's going to be spawning this. So in this case, um, if we've written our code correctly, okay, so of course the game is restarting so it's not it's not it's not having a chance. So let me just shoot that. Yeah, so three, four, four, seven, zero, five, seven, three. You can see it's randomizing uh, between, uh, in this case, zero and nine, right? So depending on where it is, so at this point, one would spawn there, 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 just like that. That's, 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 that's the goal of, of that. So that's bad guy position. Uh, we have a number in the in the array. So we need to use this number because this is a number which is basically one of these locations. So all we then need to do is say uh, the bad guy, the new bad guy dot position then we'll say from the positions array this one we will then pick bad guy position, the one that we've randomized. So this means, this basically, all it's doing is randomizing the position where this bad guy will be spawning. So we, we spawn the bad guy, and then when setting a position, we pick a position from all of these positions based on a random number. So one of these is always going to be uh, taken. Then when that's the case, all we have to do is add the bad guy to the scene. So this dot add child, this dot node dot add child. Okay, so then that that's going to be in this case a uh, new bad guy. So when this happens, what we've done is going to look like that. So Okay, you can see. Okay, so you can shoot them as they come from random, seemingly random positions anyway. Um, yeah, so I'll keep the game speed low just so that I can demonstrate in this tutorial. Okay, so that's what this section 
was about. So the next section will start doing more things, we'll add the score. So if this has been helpful, again, remember to like the video, comment, it helps me a whole lot. Subscribe to the channel for more Cocos Creator stuff, I've got a whole lot planned up, some of it even before the end of this year. Um, I do work guys, so yeah, I do these tutorials when I have um, free time. Yeah, if you want to support me further, you can definitely check the links in the description to, to buy one of the Cocos Creator courses that I've created. So creating a space shooter game, um, something like Space Invaders, um, yeah, but a, a little bit different. Um, my Cocos Creator Fundamentals course, six hours of stuff. I will be adding more stuff to that course as well. And then even an endless runner tutorial. Um, yeah, but even if you don't buy those courses, I will still be bringing a whole lot of stuff to this YouTube channel. Yeah, so that's where I'll end.